I'm Steve for This Up With Cars and today I'm back with the 1976 Ford Bronco. Last time I took a look at the truck and I think I figured out why this truck was taken off of the road 30 years ago and today I'm going to do what they should have done 30 years ago and fix those things and see if I can get it running again. Last time I connected battery power to this wire which runs down to the starter and the starter was completely shorted out which I think has ruined the starter solenoid. I do have a brand new solenoid to put in, but if I were to put that in right now, try to start it, then the old starter, which is shorted out, is going to ruin this solenoid as well. So I need to start with the starter, and then I'll replace the solenoid, and then we should be able to turn the engine over. Okay, there's a lot of grease under here. Not sure I've been underneath this thing yet. Looks like the exhaust is cut off. This grease covered thing right here is the starter. Somewhere up there is a big wire attached to it and then it's a couple bolts to get it off. Looks like this one's gonna make a mess. Getting to the bottom mounting bolt on the starter is going to be easy, but I can't even see the upper one from here. Well, that wasn't very tight. Now that I have that bottom bolt out, the upper one is up there. There's so much grease on everything that we can't even see it. Try to clean off some of this junk so I can even see the thing. But I know it's up there. Okay, finally. Since I have the cable disconnected up top, it should all come down here. There we go. Here is the old starter and the new one. And on the other side of the new starter, it even gives us a warning. It's highly recommended to replace the solenoid when installing this unit which we are going to be doing anyways. I think the cable on the starter has seen better days, so I'm not going to reuse this one. I'm going to get a new one, and I'll mount it up to the new starter. It's ready to go. Just reverse the process of removing it. Before I reinstall the starter, I'm going to scrape a bunch of this off with a simple putty knife. That looks a lot better. I'm just gonna feed my battery cable generally up where it needs to go. This as long as I can find it when I get back underneath the hood. At least now I can see the hole where the top one goes in. Getting that started wasn't too bad. Now I can install the new starter solenoid. Just connect the four wires the same way that they're hooked up here and a couple bolts hold this to the fender. Before I connect this wire, which runs down to the starter, I'm going to connect my voltmeter up to the output of the solenoid, and let's test that before I hook everything up. The two connections over here are both grounds. This is the signal that goes to the solenoid, which will activate connecting this terminal and this terminal together. So if I take the power that comes in here and I touch it to this terminal, it should output power where I have my voltmeter connected. Let's test that out. So you can see I have 12 volts being output over here now, so we know the solenoid is working correctly. With the starter now connected, let's see if the engine turns over. Looks like it does. Now we can work back on trying to get it to run again. The spark plugs that I had taken out of this engine look absolutely terrible. For now, I'm just going to media blast these and reuse them. No sense in putting new ones in because I am going to take this engine out, refresh it, and paint it at some point. It only takes a second to blast these. I used glass bead to blast the spark plug. Here's the difference compared to an unblasted one. Just a couple seconds and we have a nice usable spark plug. If you remember how stuck these spark plugs were when I went to remove them, I am going to use some anti-seize on them before I put them back in. I definitely don't want them getting stuck or stripping the block out. I 
I have all the spark plugs back in now, but I want to show you a couple things that I discovered while I was putting the spark plugs in. If the engine does run, this is the oil line that runs to the oil pressure gauge, and this is broken. So if the engine does fire up and it has oil pressure, there will be oil just pouring out of this pipe. Also over here, I noticed that the ignition box is leaking goo from it. There's some sort of dark liquid coming out of this box. So there's a good chance that we won't have any spark at all when I try to start this engine. I'm going to connect my spark tester up so that we can see if it does have spark when I crank it. No sense in trying to get an engine that doesn't have any ignition to try to fire up. So if we do have spark, we'll see it flashing right here. I don't have the keys to this truck, so in order to hotwire it, I will need to supply power to both the coil and to the ignition module. The easiest way to do this is to get the ignition switch to turn. So I'm going to play around with this for a little bit, see if I can get this apart. On these ignition module trucks, it's a bit harder to hotwire them than the older cars. A little bit of force from a screwdriver and I am able to turn the ignition on. I can tell that it's working because if I turn the turn signals on, we can see they're working. And then if I turn the ignition off, they stop working. Now that I am sure I have the ignition in the on position, let's crank it over, see if we have any spark. Nothing, and that's not very surprising. Let's use the voltmeter real quick to see if we do have any power going to the coil. The connector on the coil just slides right off the top. Then here are our two terminals. This first one does not have power. And this one does. So our ignition is on. The coil does have power. Over here on this side, we have the ignition control unit. And there's two connectors coming out of it. These two wires here should have power from the switch at various times of the switch position. So now I'll disconnect this connector and make sure that we do have power coming to the ignition control unit. Again, I will test for power here. Looks like we do have power going to the ignition control unit. So it looks like my suspicions of the goo coming from the ignition control unit has probably made it non-functional. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those on hand right now. That's as far today as I can go on the Bronco. I will order some more parts and we'll be back trying to get this engine to run. If you wanna see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.